Hey guys, welcome back. I just want to say thank you so much for your support um, from episode one. I hope you guys learned a lot and I was really inspired by all the comments and um, I'm hoping you will enjoy more Soapbox episodes to come. So today is episode two and we are talking about how core is not the same thing as abdominals. Little myth buster episode here. I wanted to take a second and just go through some anatomy with the core. Um, so we have our spine here and we went through this um, the other day just with lumbar, thoracic, and cervical. So the core is made up of four. So the four main muscles of the core, we're gonna start with one of the abdominals. So it's the deepest layer of abdominals. You have your obliques, you have your six pack abs kind of in the front here, and the deepest layer underneath it all, you can't really feel because it's not that superficial, it's called your transverse abdominus. So the fibers are running transversely and it actually wraps around your body like a corset. So it goes all the way around to the back. So that's muscle number one. Number two sits on top, helps you breathe. It's your diaphragm. Okay, so really important when we're retraining the core to incorporate breath because the diaphragm is one of the main core muscles. The third one is your pelvic floor muscles. The pelvic floor works with the diaphragm, so important to retrain breathing technique with this. It should actually almost work little bit like a pump. So when one is contracting, the other one's coming up. And when one is relaxing, the other one is also relaxing. So pelvic floor physio, if, if you've ever had any women's health issues or any pelvic floor issues, it's always good to seek out a physio that has a specialty in the pelvic floor because there's a whole bunch of different muscles down here and it's, it's a very niche um, type of training. And I'm hoping to actually bring in one of my friends, Hilary McDermott, uh, that does some pelvic floor stuff. So anyways, I digress. So we have the pelvic floor. Then in between each of the vertebrae, between each segment, there's these little tiny back stabilizer muscles called your multifidus. So again, they're super deep, so you can't quite feel them. If you feel your back, what you'll be feeling is the really big back power muscles. Um, and those will tend to get really tight and overworked if again, the deep muscles aren't kind of firing properly. So those are the four main muscles of the core. TA, diaphragm, pelvic floor, and our little multifidus. So they end up making almost this like little cube of stability. It's not just your abdominals. And we're going to demo a little exercise with one of my dancer patients in a second. It's really great even if you're not a dancer, I give this to regular patients as well. And it's very humbling, but it's a great demonstration of how the core is not the same thing as abdominals. And even if you have that really strong abdominal strength, this exercise just won't work if the core is not firing properly. So we start this exercise on the roller. I highly recommend it recommend any of you to try this. It's a great little party trick exercise. You want to get the setup right. Setup is everything and so if we're not firing the core in the right final position it just isn't ideal and again we're not kind of utilizing the core as best as we can. You'll notice the spine has different curvatures. So we have our cervical and our lumbar spine, they have a bit of that lordotic curve. And then the thoracic curves the other way along with the sacrum. We actually want to maintain these curves of the spine while we're retraining the core. So this would be called neutral spine and neutral pelvis. What can tend to happen, and what I learned kind of in my dance training that was kind of a poor cue and it was it's often misinterpreted that neutral spine is the same as flat back so whenever I heard neutral spine or flat back what would I do I would flatten out all the curves of my spine and just kind of notice that when we do that it's actually starting to posterior pelvic tilt the pelvis so again not ideal for retraining the core then you have the other people who go out the other end of the spectrum and they'll almost tend to splay kind of their t-spine out and then with that splaying of the rib cage, we get an increased lordotic curve and it leads to more of an anterior pelvic tilt. So we wanna to try to avoid those little tucky tilty movements of the pelvis for this one. So we have a little bit of space through cervical, a little bit of space through the lumbar, and a nice cue to try to maintain that connection of the thorax is just kind of feel the ribs knitting down into the roller, but still maintaining again the position of the pelvis 
and that lordotic curve of, a, of the lumbar spine. So with that said, we're gonna go through the exercise that's set up with my dancer, Miss Zoe. So she's gonna come on in here. Hello, Miss Zoe. Hello. So let's come to lie down. She's gonna lay lengthwise on the roller. Head is supported, tailbone is supported. And we're just gonna have her like hands down by her side to start. So again, this is great even body awareness training for even the regular Joe. We're looking at, okay, how does she like to position her pelvis in space? And I'm just gonna say, Zoe, just feel like you're knitting the rib cage down into the roller, beautiful. And I can still fit some fingers under her lumbar spine. And just for fun, I want the folks to see the wrong way. So I want you to flatten your low back and just see that posterior tuck of the pelvis. Again, we're not gonna be recruiting the core muscles properly if we're teaching her body that this is neutral spine. And then the flip side of that, she's gonna splay her rib cage out and she'll go into an anterior pelvic tilt. And even just sitting here doing that, if you feel your back muscles when you do that, they start to really grip on. Those are those big power muscles that wanna take over, not necessarily the deep ones that we're trying to target. So, that's always done this one or two times with me. So, she's gonna maintain kind of a neutral spine, knitting the rib cage down. We're just gonna start with her hands down to start because I wanna see how she moves. And I try not to over cue this just to see what she does. So the task is, all they need to do is fold one knee into the chest, hold for three breaths, and then she's gonna place that leg down. And again, I'm just watching kind of what happens here when she goes to lift the leg and then try the other side. Nice, and I can tell that that side's just not her super strong side. And to really amp it up, so if that goes pretty well, we may proceed. So hands to the ceiling. So she's gonna really feel like the integration of the shoulder blades, knitting of the rib cage, nothing changes, and the simple task of could you just float one knee into the chest and hold for three breaths. Good. And the nice thing about this exercise is you really can't cheat with it. And if you cheat with it, you will just end up bailing off the roller. So it's quite entertaining um, to give to people, um, but stay kind of knitted in through the rib cage there and try the other side. And it might be hard for you folks to kind of tell, and I mean, this isn't Zoe's first time doing this, but she always needs to concentrate a little bit more on this side. It just doesn't kind of work um, as well as it did on the other one. So have your arms just down by your side, you can relax. So the neat thing about this is this is how you kind of demonstrate to people, like even if, and I know Zoe ha could kind of school me in a crunch competition, but even if they have strong abs, this just won't work if their core isn't working properly. And it really brings out asymmetry side to side. So people who usually have one leg that can just come up, they don't really need to think about it. When they come to bring the other leg up, it's almost like you can see it in their face, they're trying to concentrate, it's just not working well, they're starting to wiggle or compensate. Their knee will kind of fall out to the side, they'll start to splay their back, they'll start to kind of grip their toes. Just all these little compensations that will happen when it's, it's just not their most stable side. But think of this functional for life, so not just for dancers. If you can't lie down and lift a leg without shifting, what do you think you're doing with walking, going up the stairs, running? So this is super functional for regular people. The thing that I love for the dancers is, A, it's in parallel, and they're usually way weaker in parallel because they spend all their time turned out. Um, but also, many dancers have low back and hip issues. So it usually comes down to them not being able to stabilize on one leg as they go to kick the other leg. So this is a really great one to kind of demonstrate that. So fast forwarding, usually that would be the exercise that patients would go away for a week, come back, they would have that mastered. So the progression is she would have her hands up. She's gonna float one knee into the chest. She's gonna add the opposite arm back and you can get dancy with this. You can even say fifth. And then I'm watching her rib cage to see if she does a little splay or torso shift with the arm. And then arm would come back, leg would go down. We repeat other side. So we float the other knee in. Extend the right arm back to fifth. 
maintaining that rib cage down, holds for three breaths, and then she places the limbs. Nice. Again, they would go home, master that. The danceified progression, which is really cool, is she's gonna float one knee into her chest. She's gonna extend the left arm back to fifth. She's gonna extend the leg. And now she's gonna start to lower the leg towards the floor, just past the knee, only to the point where she can still maintain this thoracic connection. And then she's gonna move the arm and the leg up to the ceiling and reach long. And she's gonna do this about five times, really thinking about moving the leg from the belly. Nice, and with breath. And what is this but a bot mall lying down? So it's really great, it's in parallel, they get it, they see how it can relate to dance, that's great. And uh, you can relax your arms there too, so. Um, yeah, it's just really humbling. And I say, okay, if you can't kick your leg in a proper stable position, what do you think you're doing standing at the bar? So again, really great one. You don't even have to danceify it. It's just great for regular people, even that knee float position. So try it at home. It's your new party trick. Just remember that core is not abs and we'll hopefully be building on how to strengthen the core in different positions and different relations to gravity in a couple weeks with episode three. So thanks so much. I'm Danny West and this is The Soapbox.